To assist the writers who were called in, the prisoner's script editor, George Markstein, prepared a writer's guide which outlined the main goals of the series. For various reasons, this writer's guide was not available to the initial writers, as Vincent Tilsley, author of The Chimes of Big Ben, recalls. Yes, I gather that there was a writer's guide to this series. I've, I've heard about I, ne I myself never saw that. I just had George telling me his concept of it. He came round to my flat in St. John's Wood, and he brought with him the first episode, Arrival. He told me that, of course, Patrick Magoon was going to play P, that there was number two. I didn't at that time understand it was going to be a different number two in each episode. I thought there was just going to be one person who was number two. Uh, but we would never meet number one, we and we wouldn't know which side ran the village, as it was already called. He told me about Port Merion. He told me about Rover about this, this extraordinary thing which in those days was not a balloon but uh, something they were actually building, an amphibious vehicle which could, uh, which, which I think it had a flashing light on it which sort of hypnotised you when it hit you. And when, in fact when I wrote my script, The Chimes of Big Ben, I thought it was going to be like that. Um, and when Rover sort of gets Nadia um, who swims out there, I imagined to some machine with a blue light actually sort of zonking her and then sort of drawing her into the machine. And it was only after that that this whole saga of, 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 of Rover occurred and they ended up with a weather balloon or something. So that actually that sequence, I think, in the Chimes of Big Ben is a bit dodgy because it doesn't really work very well, does it? And that's why. That's as much as I can remember. I thought it sounded jolly interesting. I didn't, I didn't think it sounded interesting in the way that it has since become interesting. I didn't think that nearly 30 years later I would be talking to you in, in these terms. I thought it was interesting in c compared with the sort of idea that is usually given to you by people. Anyway, what George wanted me to do was to see if I could come up with a story. He didn't give me a story. Um, it was, I, I was to try to think of one. And I thought of one within hours of him leaving, actually. I just thought, what, wouldn't it be interesting if... I just thought, well, what would happen to me if I was kidnapped? From here, I thought, in my room, in my flat in St. John's Wood. What I'm wondering now is what mental process made me wonder what would happen if they recreated his office back in London. And all that was, that was the th first thought. And I worked backwards from there to make up the story. And then I thought, well, how is he going to crack it? And I can't remember how that idea about the different time zones... Uh, I don't know where that came in. But, I mean, that's a fairly obvious bit of commonplace plotting, that. It doesn't take much to think that one up. Turning back to the writer's guide, we find it contains many facets which were never utilised. For instance, there is reference to clearly marked exits from the village, but these are cut off by deadly ray barriers. According to the list of facilities laid on for the inmates, there is a palace of fun, where they're allowed to dance, gamble, see film shows, and participate in amateur dramatics. This is only mentioned in passing during Arrival. The only script known to have used the Palace of Fun in more detail was Maurice Fahey's unused script entitled The Outsider, in which number six is interrogated in the palace's sauna. Maurice's script was one of several which, although commissioned, never made it to the studios for shooting. We've already heard about Gerald Kelsey's second script, Don't Get Yourself Killed, but details of two other scripts have come to light recently. John Cruz, who wrote the screenplay for Hell Drivers, a film McGowan starred in for the Rank Organization in 1958, was asked to write a script. He's since retired to Spain, but we managed to speak with him on the telephone, during which he told us of his brief involvement with the series. I thought that uh, it was uh, a loser in a way, it was going to be. I thought it would be a loser simply because you, you end every episode on a down note, you know, you, the, the guy is recaptured. Uh, that seems to me to be a negative, and 